everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annelise and today I will be reviewing three new Zara fragrances created by French perfumer Jérôme Epinette. Jérôme Epinette is known for collaborations with big brands such as Pyredo, Fleur, Room Tin 15, Floral Street and many other brands. This is not the first time that Jérôme Epinette and Zara collaborated. They've also made uh, most of the vibrant leather fragrances. Those are fragrances mostly sold in the men's department and recently um, they also collaborated to make three new vibrant leather elixir fragrances. I already reviewed those three new ones. I will put the link to that review in the description below. But now they have joined forces again and they have created three new fragrances. The fragrances are called Moonlight Whisper, Bold Blossom and Sunlight Bouquet and they come in bottles of 100 ml of Eau de Parfum and they retail for roughly 23 euros in Europe, roughly 36 US dollars and roughly 46 Canadian dollars. We are going to start with Moonlight Whisper but first if you're like me and you love Zara fragrances or you're just trying to get to know them a little bit better feel free to subscribe to my channel. I make mostly Zara fragrance related content so Check my channel out if you want to see some more videos and also whenever Zara releases new fragrances I always instantly order them so I can review them. Having said that um, there are two other review videos coming up. One is uh, four new fragrances again. Zara is just going crazy this year again but they've just released um, two new Red Temptation flankers and two new Golden Decade flankers. I will be reviewing that um, as soon as I have received my package and I have been able to test them. And then also I'm doing something different. I have ordered eight new fragrances by H&M and I will also be reviewing those fragrances. So if that's something that you're interested in, subscribe and um, yeah, you will get a notification when I upload those videos. But back to this video. So we are first going to talk about Moonlight Whisper. The notes listed on the bottle are just pistachio, cardamom and pink sugar but in the description of the Zara website it also uh, mentions um, so yeah, caramelized pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, delicate whispers of violet and peony, the intoxicating aroma of bellini blossom and pink sugar and it mentions skin musks, amber and whipped vanilla. Now I will put the Fragrantica notes of course up on the screen as well but yeah the note that is mostly um, to catch your eye is the pistachio and there is uh, one very popular fragrance that centers around a pistachio note and that is Kaoli Yum. I don't even know what number but Yum it's called. It's the green bottle, it's very sweet and very pistachio like and in case you are wondering if this smells the same or if it's a dupe for that one, I am happy to tell you that yes it is. Um, they are definitely very very similar. I gave this one a spray and of course I was instantly hit with that Kayali Yum um, DNA. It's really not that different. They are both very nutty of course so you do have the pistachio but it's also very very sweet. Definitely a gourmand. Now you know if you follow my channel you probably already know because I mention it a gazillion times that I'm not a huge gourmand lover. So even though this is not really something that I gravitate towards to, I do think it's a very nice fragrance. After I smelled this one, I actually went to my local perfumery to give Kaoli's Yum whatever it is another try. So I have my little tester strippy here and I mean it's undeniable that it smells very similar. Now if you own Yum uh, Yum by Kaoli then maybe if you really really know that fragrance really well you might pick up on a difference with this one. So I'm not saying it's a hundred percent exactly the same just because I don't really know Yum by Kaoli that well but I have sniffed it in the past. I've sniffed it again now and 
It's super similar. And I'm actually happy because I feel like this is the first time that Zara has duped a Kayali fragrance. I was already thinking that maybe they had some sort of agreement with Kayali that they weren't gonna dupe those fragrances or something because I feel like there aren't that many Kayali dupes. Is that just me or... I feel like that's not really a thing, but this time they did. So, I mean, it's a better price point than Kayali. So, um, yeah. And I've also heard that most Kayali fragrance don't really have the best lasting power. This one, I was not disappointed at all. I would classify this as a moderate projecting and lasting fragrance. So definitely pretty decent. I mean, it's not, I don't know if you spray this in the morning, if you're still gonna be able to really smell it very strongly um, in the evening when, you, when you're when you gonna have your shower, but it definitely is very decent. You don't have to think that, oh, it's Sara, it's probably gonna be terrible longevity, because that is definitely not the case for a lot of Zara fragrances. Some of them are definitely very um, short lasting. This one, definitely very decent. How many times did I say definitely? But that's how convinced I am. So um, yeah, I'm not mad about this. You know, even though I'm not a gourmand fan, I'm actually considering keeping this one just because it's something that I don't have. And it does really smell nice. I'm not sure. I don't know. Could this be one of my very few gourmand fragrances? I'm definitely thinking about it. Um, but yeah, you're mostly getting very sweet, creamy pistachio. Um, that is all I have to say about this fragrance. So yay for Zara making a Kayali dupe. And that was Moonlight Whisper. The next fragrance I will be talking about is called Bold Blossom. Bold Blossom explores a world where desire knows no bounds, where intimacy is celebrated and where every ingredient tells a story of passion and intrigue. I swear, these fragrance descriptions, I don't know where they are getting their inspiration, but um, yeah, in the description on the Zara website, they mention notes of pink pepper extract, tangerine, the exotic, exotic warmth of saffron, then rose absolute, incense, the juicy sweetness of raspberry, patchouli, black amber, tonka bean, absolute, and yeah, that's it. So again, I will put the notes of Fragrantica up on the screen, but when I saw these notes, I was a little scared because it sounded like something that I would absolutely hate. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna think of this fragrance because it has saffron, patchouli, Amber, I mean, those are all pretty strong notes, if you ask me, and then combined with rose. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be super bold, but the thing is, it's not. It's actually a very soft, easygoing fragrance. The saffron is very, very soft and easygoing. I think saffron is a note that can really ruin a fragrance, Sometimes it's nice, but you can easily overdo it, if you ask me. It's sort of like pesto. I love pesto, the green, uh, the green typical pesto, but if you put too much pesto in something, it's just ruined. That's just my taste. Like, and the thing with saffron, it's kind of the same. I mean, you can add some saffron. Oh, and I have the same thing with patchouli, by the way. So saffron, patchouli, even amber, I mean, could be very nice in a fragrance if you just like don't overdo it. But in here, it's actually super soft and easy going. It's very perfumey, that I will say, but that is probably again, that patchouli and rose, I, that combination just often gives a very perfumey um, vibe to me. So there's a very classical or classic, um, yeah, it's, it smells like a classic perfume, but not like a stuffy, old, super old-fashioned perfume. So I am being transported back to the, like, the 90s, and not the freshies of the 90s, but the patchouli, like the sheepress, maybe, or maybe that's more of the thing of the 80s, I don't know, but 
yeah, that classical nostalgic feeling is in here, but um, it also has some powderiness, if you ask me. And if I had to describe this fragrance in just a few words, it's very simple. I would call this a soft, sugary rose. Because there is some sweetness in here, and I know that sugar is not listed as one of the notes, but I feel like this is like a soft rose body lotion, but then you've added some powdery sugar. So not like the crystally super sweet sugar, but the powdery stuff that you add on top of, um, I don't know, like a cake or something. The rose scented lotion with the powdery sugar on top, that is to me what this smells like, but then it's made a little bit perfumey uh, because of that smudge of patchouli in there but again not too much so even if you're you don't like patchouli i still think this is worth giving a try i kind of like it it's not a love for me it's not something that i smelled and i was like oh i this is what i was waiting for this is really what i need in my collection no but there is something very pleasant about it and i think it's just that powdery sugariness that gives a very pleasant, soft sweetness. By the way, I'm seeing on Fragrantica that it gets compared to Portrait of a Lady by um, Frederick Mull. I can already tell you that no, this is absolutely not a dupe or like it's not even inspired by that one because I really, really strongly dislike Portrait of a Lady. That fragrance is just exactly what I was describing um, in the beginning of this review that super strong, rose, bold, like all the harsh notes, all the, you know, that's a fragrance that I know a lot of people love. So this is just me, but it's just too much. It's too strong. It's definitely an offensive fragrance. Um, whereas this one is pretty much the opposite. I mean, it also has like ambery rose, you know, all those, um, notes but just in a completely different way. It's just very soft and pleasant. And I would say that this is inoffensive. I mean, you would really have to overspray in order to really bother someone with this fragrance. It's just easy going. So um, yeah, I like it. Is it really 100% my cup of tea? Is it really something that I adore? No, I don't need it in my collection, but yeah, if the description speaks to you, then um, give this one a try and let me know what you think. And that was Bold Blossom. Now, the last one I will be talking about is called Sunlight Bouquet. And the notes listed on the website are citrus, um, a hint of spiciness from pink pepper extract, sweetness of peach bellini, whispers of pink rose with the elegance of orris butter, while bamboo and rhubarb lent a crisp freshness. Then they also mention a marine accord and irresistible pink sugar. And then also tonka bean absolute and creamy richness of vanilla cream. Now there's something weird going on with this fragrance. Um, it's called Sunlight Bouquet, so I thought, okay, this is gonna be up my alley. I love florals, I love sunny florals, I love warm florals, I love them all. I gave it a try and I will get back to that later, but the thing, I mean, the reason why I'm saying that there's something weird going on with this fragrance is because um, I had tested it, I had written down my thoughts, and then right before I was shooting this video, I noticed that the fragrances were up on Fragrantica. So this one as well. And the weird thing is that the accords giving on, given on Fragrantica are just not at all how I am perceiving this fragrance. So that is, it just, it's totally different from what I am picking up here. The accords mentioned marine, woody, aromatic. It's just so weird to me. Um, it says fruity and I did pick up on a lot of fruitiness as well, but I thought the accords would have been fruity, um, like fruity, floral. So yeah, that's a little bit strange. But anyway, what does this fragrance smell like? So I know it has notes of peach, bellini and rhubarb. But for me, and I'm just saying what I'm picking up on, okay? I'm not saying that, like, I'm smelling a note, so that note is in there. That's not what I'm saying. It just smells to me like pineapple. I feel like this is a pineapple-scented, perfumey 
fruity floral fragrance with some patchouli. Yeah, that's how I would describe this fragrance. So I'm just gonna give it another spray. I was a little bit hesitant about this one because it has a rhubarb note and rhubarb is a note that is very tricky to me. There are a lot of fragrances that have a rhubarb note that I just cannot handle. The most famous one being Delina, super popular. Never been a fan, I don't hate it or anything, but yeah, the rhubarb note in that one really bothers me. Then last year or two years ago, Zara, um, no, it's probably at least two years ago, maybe even three, but Zara created a fragrance with Jo Malone that was called Joe's Rhubarb. That was one of the worst fragrances that I ever smelled. I hated that one, so... And I remember as a kid, I only tried rhubarb once when I was young and absolutely hated the taste. So yeah, pretty clear that rhubarb is not my thing. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, even though it says peach and rhubarb, I'm getting pineapple. <laughs> I don't know why. It smells like a pineapple-y, perfumey, very sunny, classy, so like youthful and classy fragrance. This is something that I have not smelled before, so I do think it's pretty unique. The previous one I also think is pretty unique, by the way, like the powdery, sugary rose with a little bit of amber, like that's also something that I hadn't smelled before. And this one is also... I don't think Zara has a fragrance like this already. Again, this has a patchouli note and like I already said, a patchouli in fragrance often gives me a little bit of a classic vibe. It always reminds me a little bit of the 90s. This one has a little bit of the patchouli, but it always gives me a little bit of a 90s classy woman type of vibe. And this one as well, but then you have that sweetness of the fruit notes. I'm gonna call it the pineapple, but yeah, the peach bellini and the rhubarb, which also makes it very, yeah, like summery, spring. Kind of reminds me of a cocktail, actually. I mean, they do mention a bellini, like a peach bellini, which is sort of a cocktail, which is like, I think it's peach and champagne mixed together or something. There is sort of a fizzy, fruity cocktail vibe to this fragrance, but it still smells perfumey. So when I think of a fizzy, fruity champagne fragrance, I think of a fragrance by, okay, I just looked it up. It's Zarco Perfume and it's called Pink Molecule. That one also gave me a very fruity, fizzy champagne-like type of uh, fragrance. But that one didn't have the perfuminess, if you know what I mean. This one does. So it does still smell like someone is wearing perfume. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just less photorealistic. It is only after I saw the whole uh, Marine Accord on Fragrantica that just totally like blew me away or how am I supposed to say? But it's, it was so weird seeing it because that's not at all how I perceived this fragrance. But now that I'm seeing it, maybe it's my brain that's just tricking me right now. I don't know, but now I am sort of getting that marine saltiness that I didn't get in the beginning. But maybe I did get it because I've always found that the sunlight um, was well chosen as, as the name for this fragrance because it does have something almost vacation-like. So I did get that vibe and maybe subconsciously um, that was the marine accord, the, uh, the saltiness, Maybe that somewhat reminded me of like being near a body of water. It doesn't really smell oceany or anything. It's more like you're having a summer or spring get together with the family and everybody's dressed up and everybody's drinking those fruity punch cocktails. And there is like a lake or you're having the party at like some fancy harbor or maybe even on a boat you're having this like a cruise but not on the ocean more like on a river or some other body of water and that is where you're sipping the fruity cocktails i don't know that is sort of the vibe that i am getting so even though i didn't pick up on the marine accord i'm kind of getting now where people are getting that from so yeah i do think it's a very very interesting fragrance i like it um, I like the fact that I've never smelled anything like this one before. Like I said, it reminds me a little bit of that Zarco perfume 
one. Um, it's kind of a wink to that one. Oh, and I also saw on Fragrantica that people compared it to Hibiscus Mahajad by Maison Crivelli. Now, at first, I was like, where are people getting that from? But in the dry down, oddly enough, yeah, it's sort of there. But honestly, it's not by any means a dupe or a similar fragrance. I wouldn't say that. There's just something in here that they have in common. But it's minus the strong rose in Hibiscus Mahajad, which is very prominent in that fragrance. So the fact that I'm not really getting that here, it's more like, like I said, the fruitiness that you get here does really make it a completely different fragrance. But I get it, like something in the dry down is similar. So if you're expecting a dupe for Hibiscus Mahajad, I'm sorry, you're gonna be disappointed, it's not. But yeah, a nice fragrance nevertheless. Let me know in the comments what you think. And that was Sunlight Bouquet. Just a quick reminder again, I know I already mentioned it, but the H&M 8 new fragrances, that review is coming up. Also the four new um, Red Temptation and Golden Decade flankers that Zara just released also coming up pretty soon. So again, subscribe if you don't wanna miss that. Let me know in the comments what you think of these fragrances. Um, I think they are very interesting to say the least. Whether I really love them, I'm not really sure, but maybe that's just because they're so different than the typical fragrance fragrances that I'm used to. But I do like that um, these are a little bit different and unique smelling. I love that. Uh, thank you, Zara, and thank you, Jérôme Epinette, for creating this collection. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know, and thanks for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Bye!